Hello, my name is Mark, and I thank you so much for coming by today. Now, you can see in this drawing here that it's a bunch of people holding what looks like hamburgers, and uh, it's a black and white drawing, pen and ink, and there's no color yet, and that's what this video is about. It's actually about picking your color palette, but an alternative color palette, because when we look at a drawing like this one, we have an instinctive bias to what the color should be and what we should be applying to an illustration like this. It's hamburgers and it's people. So when we look at people, we think flesh tones from light flesh tones to dark flesh tones. When we look at the hamburgers, we think, okay, the bun is going to be sort of a, a light brown color and the hamburger itself will be probably like a reddish brown color and the accoutrements like lettuce or tomato or anything like that will have their own colors. But what if you want to choose an alternative color palette and there's a reason for that and that's what we'll get into in the video and why would you want to pick a different color palette how do you pick a different color palette what ways do you use to pick a different color palette and that's what we're getting into now you can see what I'm doing here is I just took some regular copy paper and I laid it over the illustration that I've already drawn now it's a finished black and white pen and ink illustration but I'm tracing the drawing that I already did because I'm going to use these tracings for my options of color palettes. Now I don't know what colors I'm going to use just yet. That's going to be decided once I start to think about it. And that's the great thing about this is you can have a whole creative process just in picking the color palette. So once I lay down an illustration like this and I have everything composed the way I want it to look, Picking the colors can be tricky sometimes, so I want to make sure that I pick the right colors. Now you can just start by doing swatches or painting color swatches, but as a corporate art director and graphic artist, for example, White Rain was one of the clients I used uh, when I worked for Gillette, and you can see here we had three different versions of an ad, and that was because marketing always needed to see at least three versions. They would like a blue version, a yellow version, and a green version, or a, you know, a red version and a pink version. They always wanted to see multiple options for their product or for their, their campaign. And that's what we do here with our artwork. The best way to do it is to, I guess, just think in terms of unlimited palette options. When you're doing a, a drawing or a painting or anything, we can stick with that instinctive bias and go right from there, where, where reds are reds and yellows are yellows and blues are blues. However, as you can see here, I'm just penciling in into these sketches that I've done, the tracings, just some colors that I think might be nice. Now, here I'm using a secondary palette, which is green, purple, and orange. Those are the secondary colors. Just to see what it looks like, I want to kind of get a feel for the different elements. And you can see that I'm, I'm coloring the bun green and the, the hamburgers are purple. And I just want to get a feel for how I can lay these different colored elements down to see what they'll look like against each other. Now, could I have done this with, again, the instinctive colors, the, the browns and the, the reddish browns and the, the flesh tones? Yeah, of course I could. But that's not what I'm going for with this illustration. I want this illustration to be a little different. Now, why do I want it to be a little different? because I want it to pop a little more. I want it to have a little bit of flair. I want the colors to be a little different so when a viewer looks at it, it's gonna say something less about the illustration and more about the pop of what's going on there. So there's a bunch of different ways to choose color schemes, like a triadic color scheme, which is three equally distant colors on the color wheel like purple, orange, and green. Uh, they're equally distant from each other on the color wheel, and that's a great choice to make for a color scheme. Another one is, is called an analogous color scheme, and that's when colors are lined up against each other in a chain. And complementary colors are always great, that you could choose like a red and green, or a blue and orange, or purple and yellow. So there's a lot of different color schemes you can choose. This book here is, uh, I've shown this a few times now in videos. It's uh, a great resource that I use a lot. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just say a lot. And it is a book of colors. And in this book, it just lays out some basic color schemes using different temperatures and modes. Like this is a sensible color scheme here. There's alluring, there's uh, sweet, there is dreamy, and if I wanted to go for one of those kind of modes or moods, I could look that up and just base a drawing on 
that page in this this book a book of colors here it's sensible so i'm going to go for a kind of a sensible look i'm playing off this this page here you can see in the book and using some of the colors but they're a little brighter than what is on the page and that's my choice if i want to make it a little brighter i can do that now because i've been in marketing so long i know that Anytime I come up with a client or somebody at work wants something to pop that I have to present different options and have each of them equally pop. So I can't do like a black and white version in all shades of gray and say, hey, this is the this is what I was thinking of the solution for this campaign or this this promotion here. They're not going to like that. They don't want to see a black and white version. So I have to come up with different colored options. And that's when I decide, OK. I'm going to go with my instinct colors, you know, the, the biased instinct, which is the normal flesh tones and the normal colors that you would apply to a drawing like this. But I'm also going to give my marketing person or my salesperson other options, these alternative color palettes. And that's where they rely on me and my ability to come up with these color palettes. And it's not very hard. It just takes a little bit of planning. I did a video a while back on how to plan a color palette. And if you're interested in that, go check that one out. Um, but this is more about choosing that alternative color palette to what we would normally choose and how to do it. As you can see here, I've just traced these pictures. Now I have two options and I really like these options. And I'm probably going to put these together and say, okay, one of these is going to work. Maybe the other one won't work as well. And maybe I'll need a third option or fourth option if these don't work for me either. I could go ahead and show these to marketing right from there or whoever I'm, I'm doing this piece for. Now this piece is just for me, it's just for fun. But if it was for a client, I could show them these sketches and they would be just fine with that. But another way that's really useful is digitally. This is something that I do I, I've been doing this for years now and I do it more often than I do with colored pencils or whatever. I find it much easier to work in front of a client and come up with color solutions right there on the spot. So here you can see what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've kind of gone off the instinctive color palette. Now I'm going into an alternative kind of approach and I can change the colors on the fly. I can move them around. I can switch them up and down, change the temperature, change the colors, adjust the hues. <laughs> There's so many things you can do digitally. Now I'm doing this on an iPad with a program called Procreate. If you're familiar with it, then you know the power of this program. If you're not familiar with it, Procreate is a, a wonderful program to do all kinds of art with, and uh, you can use it even for high-end uh, graphic design and so forth. It's a great program all around. I use it primarily this way. I take a pen and ink drawing and I put it into Procreate and I work it digitally. And that way I can kind of just cross over the two traditional methods, you know, and with the digital methods, I can take those two approaches to my illustration work. And it, to me, it looks really cool because I'm getting that traditional feel and I'm getting the digital result. But you can see working digitally, I can come up with a million options for alternative color palettes. And here you can see, I'm going to probably choose this color palette here. This, uh, it's a secondary palette. I really like that. And so now it's time to just apply the medium I want. Now I could just stay digitally, but for me, digital is really cool and all that, but I want to be able to immerse into my artwork. That's my favorite thing to do. And so one of the whole points of my, my passion for art is the process of painting and drawing. I, I just, like you, I probably spend more time just wanting to paint and draw than I actually do. But when I do find that time to sit down and be creative and get a chance to paint on a drawing like this, I'm telling you, I just immerse into this for hours. This this is just a blast for me. This is where I find my fun. So I'm taking this triadic scheme and I'm adding a, a fourth color into it, this blue turquoise color. And I'm just having some fun with the process of painting. And I'm not really thinking too much about the color palette at this point. I've committed to it. I know what I want the color palette to look like. And because I did those sketches and I did the colored pencil uh, palette layout, if you will, 
I know where the colors are going to go. I don't have to do any guesswork. And I find that's what a lot of students tend to do is they tend to guess as they go. They don't plan it out properly. They don't do a layout or any kind of a pre-sketch. And they just kind of go as they, as they will, laying in color wherever they feel like. But sometimes you can box yourself into a corner. In fact, I even did it in this drawing here, which I'll show you in... Uh, actually, I'll leave it to see if you can figure it out for yourself. <laughs> Where there was an element that I, I painted the same color in two areas. And that's what I mean about boxing myself into a corner. I'll, I'll share it with you. The uh, green that I'm painting here where the the person is holding the hamburger in their hand i painted the bun green the hand is also green that shows an inconsistency for me and i wish i had not done that i wish i had caught that before i started painting it but it's okay i don't mind it's not going to really change anything and nobody's going to complain about it later but um what you'll find is that if you can break down the elements, know where you're going to lay your painting out or what, where your colors are going to go and how you want the flow of things to work. This is watercolor, obviously. So I'm just glazing, which means putting layers of color on, adding some tones, adding some values, and just trying to get this thing to have a dimension of its own. And after a while, you will see it develops into that, which is the whole point of the drawing in the first place. But the real point of the drawing is, again, for me to have fun. This is not a professional piece that I'm going to sell or use for a client. This is just for me and my sketchbook, and I'm having a great time doing it. If it was for a client, I would take a lot more time with my planning and make sure everything was precise because that's what the client expects from me, and that's why they hire me, to be professional and to know exactly what I'm doing. When I met with one client a few months ago, we sat down and I did a quick sketch on my iPad in black and white and then created another layer and started to lay color over it. The client was blown away. They'd never seen somebody do like uh, work like that before. And to them, this was the easiest way to go because we could land on what the colors were going to be, how the layout was going to look, how the composition was going to be. And everything was done in the initial meeting, in the, in the initial consult. So when I went back to my studio and I finalized the drawing and I finalized what the color palette was going to be, then I sent the client some preliminaries to look at and say, okay, this is what we're going to work with. And they said, this is great. This is exactly what we talked about and this is exactly what I'm expecting. So on final delivery, they got exactly what I had shown them and what we had agreed to. There was very minimal changes. It was more an aesthetic changes uh, than anything else, uh, more cosmetic, if you will. And that was it. And overall, the, the illustration went just fine. And I was happy, the client was happy, and I moved on to the next project. But sometimes you can run into issues where a client will say, even after all the agreements and everything, that it's not what they were looking for. So having that backup to create an alternative color palette is the best way to go. To be able to have those other options available that you created is a, a great way to say to the client, if they don't like the way it came out or if it's not working for them for some reason, they say, hey, we need to change um, that red color scheme to blue or we just need another color. You can go back to your alternative options and say, you know what? It's already planned out. I have every element of the drawing ready and laid out. And you can see here, it's pretty consistent. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a complementary set, I guess, or a triadic set um, because it's both complementary and triadic. But you can see here, once it's done digitally, I can now alter those colors. And that's the beauty of, of presenting this digitally as well as traditionally. I can now have three options like you saw with the Gillette ad. So this was the, um, this was the topic of today is just how to pick an alternative color palette and why. If you enjoyed it, please leave your comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, God bless.